Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Oh, I told y'all niggas. I told y'all niggas. Y'all thought I was sweet, but I told Yes. I told y'all knuckles okay first and foremost shout out to all the 90s kids out here because for years we have been drugged particularly this 90s kid we've been drugged we've been cussed out we've been called haters of brother love you know how dare y'all keep picking on him you always got something to say about brother love he's a good man he's a good good man and I was like, Brother Love, a.k.a. Diddy, a.k.a. Puffy ain't shit. He wasn't shit when we were kids, okay? We watch how he did Make Another Damn Band. We watch how he did Danny D. Kane. Who is this at? Yo, fam, Puffy just told us to go to the store in Brooklyn and bring him back a cheesecake and walk. Damn it, we sat back and watched, you know, everything transpired between Biggie and Tupac. I've never trusted Diddy. Okay, y'all know this. Some people call this a Diddy hate channel. I don't hate anybody. I'm just big on vibes, and he's never vibed with my spirit, even when I was a kid, okay? I have not rocked with him since mo money, mo motherfucking problems, okay? Ain't rocked with his ass since then. So anyhow, so what is going on now is, honey, just, I had to clutch my invisible pearls. I was not ready for this, okay? All of a sudden, nobody, nobody at all. Here comes Cassie. Y'all remember Cassie from back in the day? They had that one hit song. They heard I was good. They wanna see if it's true. That Cassie. So if y'all don't know, Cassie Nunn came out and she is filing a $30 million, okay? Not $30,000. $30 million lawsuit against P. Diddy Combs. She's accusing him of years of rape and abuse, okay? And initially when i first heard this i'm like okay is the money running low like that's a you know that's big it's a lot of money to go after i sat here and i just read the 35 page indictment oh i don't blame her this abuse has been going on for years literally since he met her she's been abused this whole situation is just extremely disturbing. I'm gonna read y'all um, part of the lawsuit and I'm just gonna do a screen recording. I don't feel like doing a bunch of screenshots. I'm just gonna record myself reading. So please be patient with me. I got on my mother goose glasses, okay? I read this whole 35 page indictment. I'm not gonna read the whole thing out loud, but I am going to um, film it. Cause I want y'all to be with me here while I read and get everything set up. All right, so we're gonna take y'all back in time. In early fall 2007, Mr. Combs flexed his power and influence when he paid a promoter to when he paid a promoter to create a fake flyer for a party hosted by Miss Ventura. This fake posting allowed Miss Ventura to have an excuse to go to Miami, Florida, to get away from her boyfriend by using it in the guise of a legitimate event that she had to attend. Miss Ventura was stunned at how easily Mr. Combs could recruit others to lie for him. Let me take a break real quick here, okay? The boyfriend that Diddy is, you know, jealous of and feeling away. If y'all do not know, back in the day when Cassie first came into the game, she was dating Ryan Leslie. Ryan Leslie, I believe, was a part of Bad Boy at the time. That is low-key how they met. You know, Ryan was introducing Cassie to Diddy. Diddy, you know, fell in love with her. And we ain't heard or seen Ryan Leslie since. So this entire situation is crazy. When, when Diddy and Cassie broke up in 2018, if you remember, his name was trending. And a lot of people were going in. A lot of people were shocked, like, oh my gosh, I know Ryan Leslie's celebrating because Diddy's such an asshole. So I'm going to show you guys just some of the tweets from back then. This tweet says, Diddy really stole Cassie from Ryan Leslie, and we never heard from this nigga again. I don't need that type of heartbreak. Somebody else says, she left the nigga that genuinely loved her, Ryan Leslie, to give 11 years of her life to someone who left her. So people were going in back then because, you know, us 90s kids, we remember her relationship with Ryan Leslie. So Diddy was not a fan of their relationship and he wanted Cassie by any means necessary. So basically he created this whole promotional flyer 
um, for Cassie to host a quote unquote party, but that was simply to get her away from her boyfriend. I'm going to go ahead and finish reading this to y'all. Then they go on to say that Ms. Ventura was uncomfortable with the fake flyer, but because the request was to go to Miami was made by the owner of her record label because she was scared to go against his wishes and face repercussions over her career. Miss Ventura agreed to join Mr. Combs in Florida. During this trip to Miami, Mr. Combs provided Ventura with a copious amount of drugs. She became more intoxicated than she ever had. Her intoxication lasted through the weekend trip. If she wanted Mr. Combs to continue to support her career, she could not refute when Mr. Combs was urging her to take more drugs. After providing her with drugs, Mr. Combs had sexual intercourse with Miss Ventura during this trip. Within two years of meeting Mr. Combs, Ms. Ventura found herself flirting to an immediate cycle with her boss and the owner of a record label and one of the most powerful men in the entertainment industry. From the very start of the relationship, Mr. Combs exerted his power and influence over Ms. Ventura. This dynamic was fueled by their 20-year age difference. Because remember, when, they, when he first was taking her from Ryan Leslie, she was only 19 and Didi was like 37 years old. Okay, so by this time, she's about 22 and he's in his early 40s. So now we're going to go on to page 13. This is where things get crazy. So they go on to say what started as a whirlwind celebrity meeting of drugs and alcohol fueled parties have returned into frightening and violence. Miss Ventura also exposed the intense violence that pervaded Mr. Combs' rise to fame. For example, on one occasion when Mr. Combs and Miss Ventura were using drugs together in his home, one of his security staff burged in and announced that Suge Knight, a longtime rival of Mr. Combs, was spotted at Mel's diner. In Los Angeles, Mr. Combs began to get dressed and retrieve multiple guns from his safe and ran out of his home to where he believed Mr. Knight was dining. Ms. Ventura became terrified and began to cry. On at least two occasions, Mr. Combs demanded that Ms. Ventura hold Combs' gun in her purse. Ms. Ventura had no familiarity with guns and was petrified that the firearm would accidentally go off in her purse. There was no clear reason as to why Mr. Combs required her to hold his guns except to reinforce to his young girlfriend that he was violent and dangerous. Over the next decade, multiple times a year, Mr. Combs would violently beat Miss Ventura, leaving, bu leaving bruises all over her body. After every instance in which he beat Miss Ventura, Mr. Combs used his money and power to orchestrate extensive efforts to hide the evidence of his abuse, including by hiding Miss Ventura in hotels for days at a time to let her bruises heal. Now that sounds like somebody else's story, and we'll get to that in a second, okay? In one instance, after a party with Jay-Z, Mr. Combs beat Miss Ventura repeatedly in an Escalade by kicking and hitting her. He forced her out of the vehicle on Fifth Avenue in New York City. She was eventually able to hail a cab and get to her apartment in Manhattan, where she cried in fear, realizing that there was no one else she could tell about what happened at the hands of an incredibly powerful man. She spent the subsequent three days hiding in her apartment. In January 2009, Mr. Combs learned that Ms. Ventura spoke to another music manager at a party in Los Angeles and became enraged. She had hoped that speaking to this manager would allow her to further grow her career and Mr. Combs would be happy for her. But instead, he became extremely angry and pulled her out of the club where the party was taking place. Now, mind you, earlier in this um, reporting, he had signed her to a 10 album deal, okay? This is a woman who was not a great performer or singer, no shade, okay? There was a lot of controversy about her rise to fame back in the day, and he signed her to a 10 album deal, and that just shows me that he wanted power over her because when would she ever be able to create 10 albums? She was barely able to create the one and hasn't really had any successful albums since then. So this was basically a slave contract. And she has not had a hit song since 2006. So at this time, it's 2009. It's been three years. And, you know, she's trying to make good for this contract that she signed with Diddy. And she's trying to get her music out there. I don't believe that he ever intended to make her a star. He just wanted to keep her as her sexual abuse victim. That's, you know, from reading this, that's what I think. And the fact that she never put out any more music after 2006. 
So then they go on to say, in leaving the club, Mr. Combs beat Ventura, pushed her into the corner of the vehicle, and was stomping on her face. Mr. Combs' security staff, Roger Bonds, tried to stop the beating, but was unable to de-escalate the situation. When the car arrived at Mr. Combs' residence, Ms. Ventura attempted to run away, but Mr. Combs followed her and proceeded to kick her again in the face. Ms. Ventura was bleeding profusely and was then ushered into Mr. Combs' home, where she been, where she. Began began to throw up from the violent assault. Upon recognizing the damage that had been done and the physical evidence of his abuse, Mr. Combs panicked and forced his staff to bring Miss Ventura to a hotel suite at the London Hotel in Los Angeles, where she was required to stay for a week. During this day, as her injuries from the beating healed, Miss Ventura began to fully realize that Mr. Combs' tremendously loyal network not only knew about and witnessed his assaults, but that also these witnesses were not willing to do anything meaningful to stop Mr. Combs' behavior. She recognized that she was powerless and that reporting Mr. Combs to the authority would not alter Mr. Combs' status or influence, but would merely give Mr. Combs another excuse to hurt her. Now we're going to get into the sex trafficking part. So then they go on to say, within a few months of beginning a romantic relationship with the 45-year-old Mr. Combs, the 22-year-old Ven- the 22-year-old Miss Ventura felt beholden to his whims and demands. While in New York City, Mr. Combs told Miss Ventura that he wanted to engage in a fantasy that he called voyeurism. Mr. Combs said that it would turn him on if he saw Miss Ventura with another peen. The first time Mr. Combs hired a man and brought him to his home in Los Angeles, the man, Mr. Combs and Ventura, wore a masquerade mask and ingested drugs. Mr. Combs directed Miss Ventura to perform sexual acts with this man while Mr. Combs watched them. He masturbated while he directed Miss Ventura and the man to do specific sexual acts. The entire encounter lasted multiple days. Mr. Combs began to call the arrangements a freak off or a F.O. He would repeatedly tell Miss Ventura at random moments that he wanted an F.O. and Miss Ventura was eventually expected to facilitate the location and the hiring of the male sex worker. At certain points during Miss Ventura and Mr. Cone's relationship, he would insist on freak offs weekly. Mr. Cone's would repeatedly tell Miss Ventura that the practice was our thing and our secret. Freak offs would often take place in hotel suites and include the Trump International Hotel in the Columbus Circle, um, hotels in Beverly Hills, the London Hotel in Los Angeles, the Intercontinental Century City, and the Intercontinental in the Intercontinental Atlanta and New York. So basically, a bunch of hotels: Beverly Hills, the Miami Fountain Blue. This man was just basically, you know, doing all these freaky parties at multiple hotels. On one occasion around 2023, Mr. Combs had an FO set up at the international at, at the Intercontinental Hotel in New York City, after which he was charged with tens of thousands of dollars in damages by the hotel. Upon information and belief that Mr. Combs chief of staff, Tony Fletcher, played the invoice and paid the invoice that was charged by the hotel. Ms. Ventura was eventually instructed to use a website and escort services to find male sex workers to participate in FOs. Mr. Combs told Ms. Ventura to search for large black penises on the website. Sometimes Mr. Combs would pay to fly male sex workers to his location, including to multiple cities in the United States, as well as abroad. He required Ms. Ventura and his staff to help him make these arrangements. Mr. Combs' assistants would help to set up FOs, including by setting up hotel suites with baby oil and Astro Glide. I don't know what Astro Glide is, but I'm thinking it's some type of sex gel or lube or something, child. Who knows? Anyways, they go on to say Mr. Combs always supplied Ms. Ventura and sex workers with copious amounts of drugs before and during the FOs. Ms. Ventura was given ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, 
and alcohol in excessive amounts during the FOs, which allowed her to have disassociation during these horrific encounters. It became commonplace to get IV fluids days after FO to recover from the excessive substances pushed upon her. Miss Ventura was required to dress up in lingerie for an FO, and Mr. Combs insisted that she wear white nail polish to contrast her nails with the skin of the black man that he hired to have sex with. With her. During the FOs, Mr. Combs would instruct Miss Ventura to pour excessive amounts of oil all over herself. Mr. Combs would instruct Miss Ventura and the sex workers to speak to each other and then would specifically tell Miss Ventura where to touch the sex workers. Mr. Combs would say things like, grab that big black dick and ask her, how does it feel? As he directed her to perform for him. In addition to directing Miss Ventura and masturbating, Mr. Combs would use, would use his phone, laptop, and tablet to film Miss Ventura having sex with the hired sex workers. He treated the forced encounter as a personal art project, adjusting the candles he used for lighting to frame the videos that he took, while Miss Ventura quickly deleted any photographs or video of the sex acts that they were taking on her phone, Mr. Combs repeatedly made it clear that he retained many of the videos of Miss Ventura during the FOs. Then they go on to say, frequently her anxiety before the FOs became so great that she would become physically ill, sometimes to the point of vomiting. While kneeling over the toilet, Mr. Combs would shame her into performing for him, eventually forcing her to get up and proceed with the encounter. She knew firsthand that telling Mr. Combs that she did not want to engage in the FOs would be met with anger and violence. In addition to any suggestion that Miss Ventura would refute the FOs or otherwise report Mr. Combs' abuse was met with ultimatums by Mr. Combs, who would say that Miss Ventura could not go to the police because she had a lot to lose. Around August 2015, for example, in the middle of a surprise birthday dinner for Miss Ventura's 29th birthday, Mr. Combs insisted that Ms. Ventura leave the party and go to the hotel for an FO. When she expressed that she did not want to go, Mr. Combs had Ms. Ventura cornered by his security staff in order to force her to leave with him. After this FO, Mr. Combs and Ms. Ventura went back to the hotel room that Ms. Ventura was staying in, where some of Ms. Ventura's friends were allegedly hanging out. Mr. Combs was severely intoxicated and at one point during the night picked up one of Ms. Ventura's friends like a child and dangled the friend over the balcony of the 17th floor of the hotel suite. Ms. Ventura and the friends were scared by Mr. Combs' erratic behavior, but Ms. Ventura was heavily sedated because of the drugs that she took to participate in the FOs and therefore was unable to respond to Mr. Combs' terrifying behavior. So now here's the part about her and Kid Cudi. So during one of their freak offs, Mr. Combs found Ventura's phone and found emails between her and Kid Cudi. Mr. Combs became enraged and proceeded to place a manual corkscrew in between his fingers and lunged at Ms. Ventura. Ms. Ventura ran away to stay at Kid Cudi's home to escape Mr. Combs' wrath. Soon thereafter, one of Mr. Combs' staff members told Ms. Ventura that she needed to just talk to Mr. Combs. And even though Mr. Combs was enraged, feeling like she could not escape Mr. Combs and his network of enforcers, Ms. Ventura returned to Mr. Combs. He hit her several times, then kicked her in the back when she tried to run out the door. She went to her parents' home in Connecticut where her mother took pictures of her bruises. Mr. Combs had left on Ventura's body. In February of 2012, during Paris Fashion Week, Mr. Combs told Miss Ventura that he was going to blow up Kid Cudi's car and that he wanted to ensure that Kid Cudi was home with his friends when it happened. Around that time, Kid Cudi's car exploded in his driveway. Miss Ventura was terrified as she began to fully comprehend that Mr. Combs was both willing, both willing and able to do to those that he believed slighted him. In 2015, Miss Ventura spoke to a popular music manager at an after party in a hotel suite in Las Vegas, Mr. Combs saw her speaking to this manager and sternly told her to step into the bedroom adjoining the suite. Mr. Combs beat Miss Ventura severely. She ran from corner to corner of the room trying to avoid Mr. Combs beating and kicking her. When she tried to lock herself in the bathroom, he pushed through and punched and kicked her while she was curled up around the toilet. Her screams were drowned out by the loud music playing outside of the hotel suite. When Mr. Combs had a security and assistant saw Miss Ventura after the assault, they both began to cry. Miss Ventura had two black eyes, 
a busted and bruised lip and a huge welt on her forehead. Upon seeing the results of this vicious attack, Mr. Combs immediately took steps to conceal his wrongdoing, forcing Miss Ventura to stay at his home in Homely Hills along with one of his sons. While there, Mr. Combs FaceTimed Miss Ventura and stated, you gotta go up, you gotta put more makeup on, my son can't see you like that. She did put the makeup on per Mr. Combs' demands. Miss Ventura felt like she had no choice but to obey her abuser, even though the security guard's assistants, the friends, saw the situation she was in. No one dared to help her or speak up on her behalf. She therefore had no choice but to remain subservient. So as you guys see, this situation is extremely disturbing. Now, what is very interesting is that this reminds me of what Kim Porter went through, allegedly, okay? And I've never really gone into too many details about Kim Porter and her alleged abuse with Diddy. But for all of us 90s kids, if you guys remember, um, you know, while Diddy was doing him and fucking around with J-Lo and, you know, being seen with her and acting like Kim didn't exist, Kim was tired of it and she started a relationship with Shakir Stewart. If you guys don't know Shakir Stewart, um was at one point in time, he was promoted to be an executive vice president of Def Jam Recordings. Um, he was also a manager. He's the one who got uh, Sierra signed to LaFace Record. He also helped sign Rick Ross and Young Jeezy. So a lot of people in the game really respected Shakira Stewart. So anyways, um, legend has it, right, allegedly, him and Kim were dating. And Diddy was really, really pissed off about this. So they were basically in San Tropez. And um, they're saying that Diddy found out about her messing with Shakira Stewart. And he got pissed off. And he allegedly basically took her by the head and slammed her face into the table, which broke her nose. And I remember that going around the internet back in the day because Kim's face, if you look at her nose, her nose does not look like how her nose used to look back in like the 90s and the 2000s. You can tell like something happened to her nose and they're saying that it happened after her trip to San Tropez with Diddy and that Diddy broke her nose because she was messing with Shakira Stewart. And I don't blame her because Diddy was messing with, you know, tons of women while he was supposed to be faithful to her. In 2008, Shakira Stewart would replace Jay-Z as the executive vice president of Def Jam Records. Before he accepted the position, he had the contract for two weeks before he signed it. Upon signing, he reportedly told people close to him that he felt like he made a deal with the devil. Previous to this position, Shakira was responsible for signing Sierra while he was with the Face Records and Rick Ross and Young Jeezy while while he was with Dev Jam before becoming executive vice president. Before his death, it's noted that this new position brought him a lot of stress with the downturn in music sales not helping at all. Reportedly, LA Reid, the chairman of Island Dev Jam at the time, had a three hour meeting with Shakir and would inform him that he no longer had his position. Before his death, Shakir is said to have been taken Ambien and was very paranoid about the feeling of people out to get him. Shakir would ultimately be found dead in his home after pulling the gun on himself. Was it because of the depression from his job or was it the result of a messy love triangle we may never truly know so now that cassie's coming out with all of this i've always believed that you know people call it you know internet legend and rumors but if you look at kim's before and after pictures i've always felt like diddy did something to her you know something happened and um i'm just not surprised at all I don't think Cassie's lying in any way because I've been saying for years that there's something wrong with this man. He has a very disgusting, nasty spirit. On top of that, let's not forget, just like I think two months ago, I did a whole breakdown of the whole Danny DeCane situation with Aubrey O'Day blasting Diddy. When I was talking about Diddy, you know, trying to get back to publishing, I'm telling y'all, he's not doing this out the kindness of his heart. He's doing this for other reasons. It's not because he cares about these people. And I did a whole breakdown. And remember in that breakdown, I showed the clip of Audrey O'Day basically admitting that the real reason why she was kicked out of Danny D. Kane is because of sexual reasons, is because Diddy was doing things to her. And if you go back and you watch Making of the Band, the few clips that you can find online, you can tell there was more to it than her just changing her appearance. You know what I'm saying? He was very controlling and very creepy. Y'all check this out. Thing you could imagine why somebody would want to fire somebody. Can you give us a little more? <laughs> um, I wasn't willing to uh, do what 
was expected of me. Mm. Not talent wise, but in other areas. Mm -hmm. And were other girls doing? I was the only one that was in those types of positions. Wow. When you look back on that, how does that make you feel? You know, I have such a love hate with it all because I don't think I would have been able to be so successful in so many other areas had I not been trained under Diddy. Mm -hmm. He was the hardest person that you can work for and it was torture and not the work part of it, but the other stuff, mind games, like just all the girls were so divided and the men and the people running it were the, had their hands in it, mm -hmm. moving everything. Um, there was a lot of betrayal. There was a lot of lies. There was a lot of, um, you know, when you're, when you're young and impressionable and you're just, we understand our beauty as women through the eyes of the people observing us. Well, who's observing us? Men. So we learn our beauty through a man's eye, which is, is very subjective. So it's, it's difficult when you're that young to understand your worth as a woman through the men that I was around. And that was very traumatic. I don't think any of us have healed from that. Diddy would be like, you're not hot anymore. Like what happened? You don't have anything like you don't have any curves. You're looking like just, you're not looking like I can't get people to think that you're my good looking person. And there was no me too at that time. There was no protecting anyone mm -hmm. at that time. You signed a million NDAs and a million contracts that took away all your rights. So you really were operating in an environment that you had no control in. On top of that, there was also audio that came out a while ago that's now going viral again. A future basically calling out Diddy in these weird ass parties, you know, where, you know, future's like, I don't want to go to any parties with Diddy. We've also had that video of Diddy on Revolt with um, Nori and Fabulous where he's calling him daddy. Diddy's just a weirdo. He he just gives me bisexual weirdo tease. Check this out. Yeah, motherfucker. Ciroc. Damn, we got all this liquor. Yeah, y'all want Diddy to come to my room, but this thing ain't even brought no Ciroc. I don't want this nigga around me. He's an old ass bitch. We had, we, um, we want to thank you. Come here. Don't, don't sit on the bed or nothing. No homo. No, just, just don't get close to the bed. Don't get close to the bed. But it's just like, yo, we want to thank you for hosting the thing, man, man. You, you, it's been a pleasure. You didn't have to do it and you did it. No, no, no. I definitely didn't have to do it. I, I definitely didn't have to. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting in the bed. Uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did. I'm just going to... If we can, just let's, let's just put the camera a little this way just so we're not... I don't want my shot to even... Like, I don't want it to come close to the bed at all. I, sh I should look like he fresh off the goddamn plane. I should, I should, I should, I should. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the frosted flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented, you know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the... All for the frosted flakes because he used to always get up early. With me. <laughs> now he's one of the richest stars yo, in the world. And I'm yo, like, what, what the, the fuck, fuck did Puff just, just say? Good. Nobody's no, gonna acknowledge this for me. Puff just said we used to wrestle over the frosted flakes, and we're streaming live. That was stupid. Listen, that was fucking stupid. Listen, having a good time. Yo, are you usher made in the? I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending you New over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. I, feel, I was so mesmerized, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was just so blown away by the stamina, the fucking, the connection. Being able to be connected that, being able to be connected that long, so much shit. You got like so much, motherfuckers ain't doing all this shit out here. All those, all those dance numbers and all that. Took your time with it. Breathe it in. Yeah, they yours when you go see this for you. This ain't for nobody else but you. You take that time, boy. I see you. Fly ass motherfucker doing babies. Fuck you in the kitchen. Eating all my cereal. <laughs> Man, you doing babies in a pink suit. God is the greatest. Won't he do it? Won't you want people to know about oh. I don't know if the story that I have about P. Diddy is a thing. Oh, that I love, know I about. love it. You, you think it's something we didn't talk about it on the show, but you told us off the show. Should I just tell you? Yeah, I mean, okay. I'd love to. I mean, listen, this isn't alleged because you it happened. No, to no, you. no. There's nothing alleged about this. Okay, it is alleged. <laughs> <laughs> clap, 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 clap. Clap, 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 We are comedians. <laughs> All right, I'm go for it. We're so lonely. So, um, so 
I'm fucking goblins. I went to a party on Star Island in Miami uh, where P. Diddy has a private residence. I mm-hmm. had no business being there. Mm-hmm. I was with a famed uh, house producer who was DJing the party. Sure. And I will keep his name out of it. Yep. And I took a whole bunch of ecstasy because everyone there was taking ecstasy. It was basically me and like beautiful like ethnic models, mm-hmm. like just beautiful women who I obviously had no interest in. Cause, like, yeah. That's it's a, like, the Big Pimpin' video. that's not my type. Right. <laughs> we're going to stick to Peppa, please. Yeah, we're going to stick to Peppa, <laughs> Peppa. And, and ghouls from Us Weekly. <laughs> right, right. Um, so I'm, I'm like kind of stumbling around. It's like, you know, it's all like, you know, my man is telling me that like, you know, every third person is some executive, mm-hmm. you know, got behind the scenes guys who I don't recognize. It's a high-end crowd. Very high-end. And okay. there's no joke. There's maybe 100 people. Okay. I mean, it is intimate. It's a serious I have serious no business party. being there. Sure. I'm in like a, you know, like an old Jewish grandmother's windbreaker like <laughs> I am now. Right. At this exact moment. Right. And um, so long story short, I am on ecstasy and I'm trying to find the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And I can't find the bathroom. And, and I just kind of like go down a flight of stairs. And now I'm in like the inner windings of the mansion. Because yeah. most of it's going down by the pool. Okay. You know, cabanas and stuff. Well, dragon's lair. Yeah, dragon's lair. Yeah, we're getting serious. So I get lost. Yeah. And I'm in, like, just a maze of rooms. Yeah. Now, I'm looking for the bathroom. I start opening doors. One's like a closet. One's a room. It doesn't have a bathroom in it. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Um, every room should have a bathroom in it. That makes sense. First if of all. If you're in this fucking every dungeon. Every room should yeah. have, right. Every house should so have. So I open yeah. a door, and in that room, there are a bunch of men. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're all kind of, like, very, like, Romanesque, like, laying about and, you know, kind of, like, very, like, kind of leaning on each other. Not really spooning. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying it seems like a thing. I miss his birthday with party, Puff, man. Man, I but I'm talking about for you. your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I'm, I, yeah, we we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. And, mm. No, but me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying miss, it seems like a thing. I'm, yeah, I love this drink. Where you put my bag? I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag? Daddy, yeah, I like when you when you scrambling and scraping for shit. No, 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 I got I like that. You know, I'll be practicing. Yeah. Mr. Lee, we're, yeah, we're, I love this drink. Well, you Daddy, I like Mr. when you oh, when you scrambling and scraping for shit. That was you. Scrambling. <laughs> <laughs> what? You said, I like when you do it like that, Daddy. <laughs> when you scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> like, I don't know what I was talking about. Hey. Nah, nah. I mean, I was You don't called, go back no, and no, look no. at that stuff and laugh? I mean, it's. I mean, it, it could be funny. I don't really be on it like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like. I'm you sure know, we can I'm, put Charlemagne's cop. Daddy, you remember uh, 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 Scarface when, when that, that that white woman was coming down the escalator? Yeah. He was in that man house and he saw that man and wife and was like this. I was watching Puff. The nigga Puff was looking at her. He saw this 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 white woman. It was bottles on bottles on bottles around. It was lit. Puff jumped out. Me and Cassie sitting next to each other. My wife right here, Cassie right here. The nigga jumped off the bar, came over and said, yo, yo, Cassie, tomorrow, I want you to shave the side of your head. And I was like, I'm like, what the fuck kind of request is that? <laughs> like, so when I'm like, what the fuck? So when I look up there, this white woman side of her head was shaved, my nigga. And the bitch looked good with it. So I was looking at Cassie. I was like, well, I, I was like, you're not about to do that, are you? She said, well, I mean, whatever Sean wants, I'm going to do. Nah, nah, we got to get everything out of you right now. No, it's, it's in the book. The thing, it's look. in the book. You can check it out. But what I was happened? actually one of the more favorable stories in the book. She, oh, yeah. what, what happened? happened? <laughs> Y'all went to his house and in, we in Miami. She swallowed. What happened? Tell what happened. Was, and he was so romantic. And I, every minute of him. Then when he said he loved me. Oh, oh God. See, <laughs> what, what, happened for what book you read? <laughs> Fairy tales. Tell us your story. Yeah, what happened? No, nah, I mean, well, uh, as a single man, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I have no shame in my game with okay. that. You know what I'm saying. Uh, so that's where I was at the time, and we went to um, uh, Florida. We got invited to a, a puffy party, I the New the Year's Eve party. Uh-huh. Went to the party. You know, all um, dudes. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it was actually a good party. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. It, it, it was at, on South Beach, right? Right. So then we, you know, we go to the house, and then you know. Uh, he he invited us to the house because he wanted to go to the club afterwards. Right? I was like, right. okay, cool. Mm-hmm. So Superhead is with me. You know what I'm saying? Karen Karen is, th- is with me. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Superhead. Yeah. So she takes me. <laughs> she, you know, she Puffy calls me outside. He's like, hey man, you know the um that that girl you you know about the girl you. Were? I was like, yeah, man. Yeah, everybody know, but you know what I'm saying? What's happening? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, uh, you know, that's the devil, man. You know what I'm saying? I was like, what you mean that's the devil? The devil got a pretty mouth. Yeah. I was like, what you mean that's the devil? 
<laughs> you know, and then he was like, yeah, man, she, she videotaped you with fingers in the booty. That's a new movie. You know movie. what I'm saying? I was the like, what? The devil sucks like, penis. Hey, yo, what's, what's the fuck are you talking oh, about? Oh, we oh, buying, we <laughs> buying. I heard a penis and a finger in her yeah. ass going, what? She said, he, he, he so told, Puffy tells you that he go, she. She will videotape you with fingers in the booty. And, and I was like, he, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? Confession. So then I go back in the house and I ask her, what the fuck are you talking about? He said, you a filmer. No, I, I did ask him. He's just like, whatever. He, he went off and did his thing. And I was, was like, he okay. limping? No. <laughs> <laughs> he walked away and a nail fell out of his boot. No, I'm going to clear this shit up. Because I'm not going to have my name out there crazy I'm like that. that. Go ahead, go ahead. So then, so then, so then, so then, so then he said, so then she said, uh, I told him what she, he told me. And she was like, oh, she started laughing like a mother. I'll tell you later. So then, so then I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to make a big deal of it, whatever. So, so then he's you no. Know, then, then I guess he's had some prior incident with her that he don't want nobody to know about. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we get into the truck. He said, "Let's go to this club." So everybody piling the, tr the, the car. The car is fucking silent. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we get to this club and then we walk in the back, the back way. It's a VIP lounge. Ain't nobody in there. And then you know the club is going. It's all jumping. And then I'm sitting there with with old girl. So I, so so then, so then, so then uh, you know, he he's doing his business. We go down and get a drink. You know, we sitting there bopping to the music, and then he say, she point over the corner. It's two dudes kissing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? So I like, okay. Then it's girls in the club too, and then she point another direction. It's another dude over there, like butt ass naked dancing. Well, that's been. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we take off, man. You know what I'm saying? We leave the club so directly. I didn't say peace to nobody. So I didn't see nobody. Gay. Yeah, it was it was a suspect. Lot of males, a lot of a lot, lot, lot of suspect. The club you was could chalk it up. You could chalk it up to being in Miami or whatever. I never blame it on the. I've been in a gang. I've been in a gang of clubs, man. The club was called. And I ain't never I ain't never mistakenly stepped into a club having that kind of activity. You know what I'm saying? Me neither. There it is. So we took a cab home back to where I was, and that's what happened. So and she sucked you. Off. Nuts and slaps. <laughs> it's in the book. Before she started. <laughs> it was a matter of fact. It was a set it off party. Jada Pickett, Pippa Capaz, all of them was there. You know what I'm saying? It was just uh, seemed like Puff and Tupac was like a couple. Seemed like to me. Uh, it was just a lot of weird shit going on. And, you know what I'm saying? The vibes ain't there. I guess that that's what Tupac was talking about. The Illuminati and shit. It's like Vivica Fox was with this big gay man. He was 6'9". They called him, his name 6'9". He had the red hair with a big old booty and shit. No, he was gay and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? It's just a lot of, a lot of weird shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? That shit, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's what Tupac, I guess he wanted to get up out of the Illuminati or something. But I, I seen it. A matter of fact, MC Light pulled off with Tanisha Arnold. You know what I'm saying? In her brand new 560. Black one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that shit weird, dude. Yeah, that's some weird ass shit going on, you know? Yeah. And what was Tupac doing at the party, yo? Him and Puff was there. Together. They was there, you know what I'm saying? That's why I don't know how they fucking fell out or nothing like that. They was road dogs. You know what I'm saying? They even got pictures of him. He got on that, uh, uh, that blue sweater. With the turtleneck, him and him hugged up like this with the black hat. Have you ever seen that picture? No, nah, I don't recall, but I'm pretty sure I came across it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That picture there, that they was at that party that day. Yeah, that's just like a bunch of weird shit. That whole fucking yeah, that shit weird, dude. Yeah, bunch of uh, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm not no gay bash or nothing. I mean, none of that shit, but that shit ain't right. You know what I'm saying? That shit, that whole party was weird old out. Yeah, and it was Jaden Pickett. But. You saying that, you saying the whole party was weird. What did you see at the party that made it weird? I mean, I'm confused. I guess it was the Illuminati. It's just weird. I know I wouldn't want to be part of no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm from the old school, dude. Now, also, his biggest nemesis in the music industry who does not like him, and 50 Cent has been calling Diddy out for years, has been saying that Diddy's gay. You know, Diddy tried to take him shopping. Well, 50 Cent is speaking out, and this is what he said today. 
He says, damn, brother love, brother love, brother love. You out here looking crazy MF. Laugh my ass off. You know uh, 50 Cent gonna have something to say. He keeps, he's probably one of the only people in the industry that keeps his foot on Diddy's neck. Everybody else is scared to hold Diddy accountable. 50 don't care. He does not like Diddy and he's not like Diddy for a long time. So this entire situation is insane. But even um, Kid Cudi's peoples are confirming that his car was blown up. So it's being reported that a spokesperson for Kid Cudi confirmed Miss Ventura's account and they stated that it was all true. So I definitely believe her. On top of that, if you guys do not know the lawyer that she's using on this case, because they're trying to dismiss it and act like, oh, you know, everybody's just hating on Diddy. The lawyer that she hired for this case is one of the top attorneys in the country. His name is Douglas Wigdor. And he was one of the attorneys that was representing many of the women who were suing Harvey Weinstein. Okay. And so he's been going hard for them. He's trying to get bigger settlements for them. He's a very high powered lawyer in New York. And the fact that she got him on his team means that there is significant evidence to what she's claiming. He's not going to jump on some bullshit, not with his reputation. This is one of the guys who helped to take down Harvey Weinstein. So she has some powerful guns with her. Now, Diddy's peoples are responding back. Diddy's lawyer is responding back. And this is what Diddy's lawyer had to say. They're saying this. A lawyer for Mr. Combs, Ben Bofferman, um, said Mr. Combs vehemently denies these offensive, outrageous allegations. For the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subjected to Miss Ventura's persistent demand of $30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book. Remember, Kim Porter was allegedly writing a book, okay, um, about their relationship, which was unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. Despite withdrawing her initial threat, Miss Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs' reputation seeking a payday. So that is what his lawyer is saying. I don't believe anything the lawyer has to say. Um, it's too many people where there's smoke, there's fire. Too many people have some type of crazy, shady, ditty story. Just like with Gerald Fogel from Subway, and I told y'all that years ago, and I got drugged, that where there's smoke, there's fire, then it came out that he was abusing and molesting all those damn kids. With this man, where there's smoke, there's fire, okay? And let's not forget all the stuff that Keithy D had been saying on these podcasts about Diddy not looking out for him, you know, after the hit was done and everything else. So I think Diddy has a lot, you know, his karma is coming back to him. I think, you know, he has a lot of stuff right now between Cassie, Keefe D, you know, I think there's going to be a lot more that's going to come out concerning Diddy and his antics. And you know what? I'm here for it because he has used and abused a lot of people and you have to pay at some point in time for all the wrongs that you've done to so many people all the artists that he cheated and did not pay their rightful earnings. You know, the artists who died poor and penniless, you know, so the fact that Cassie, who to me has always been unproblematic, you don't hear her name out here in these blogs. She's very quiet. She's always kept to herself. You know what I'm saying? Even when she was with Diddy, you never heard a peep from her. So the fact that she's coming out with all of this, I believe that she's definitely has been through something. So even at first I was like, damn, that's a huge lawsuit. But once I read through the whole 35 pages, oh, hell no. She deserves that and more for everything Diddy's done to her at this point. It's just, it's insane. So now on top of that, Aubrey O'Day and Don from Danny D. Kane, they're also speaking out. So this is what they said. Aubrey says, been trying to tell y'all for years, prayers up for this queen at Cassie. And then Don from Danny D. Kane says, prayers to Cassie and her family for peace and healing. You are beautiful and brave. So now you have the Danny D.K. members, you know what I'm saying, definitely, you know, low-key co-signing what Cassie's saying. So this entire situation is going to be interesting. I can't wait for more information to come out. I'm definitely going to stay on top of this story because y'all know I'm no fan of, you know, P. Diddy, a.k.a. Brother Love and whatever else y'all want to call him on social media. But let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I want to know y'all's thoughts on this entire crazy situation um, concerning Diddy. Were you guys shocked that basically Cassie came out with this bombshell lawsuit? And how do you guys feel about the details that I read to you guys? Do you feel like she's over exaggerated? 
exaggerating? Do you feel like Diddy did this? You know, how do y'all feel about it? And I encourage you all to go do your own research and read through the whole 35 pages. Um, it's a pretty quick read, but it's it's a lot to take in. It's definitely a lot. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Please make sure to share this video. Feel free to like the video. Please make sure you're still subscribed to this channel. I think we're like 15K away from a million subscribers or something somebody told me the other day. So let's make sure that we're still subscribed, okay? Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I look forward to y'all's comments down below, and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.